All right, I have an idea. I've got some leftover black and some other colors, and I don't know if you can see in there, but this little mold here has a whole lot of details. And yeah, those are little like bones and stuff, but it's a little skull mold. So you can see the little teethy in there. That looks a little creepy. So we're gonna play with him today. this is Claire Lawrence so this mold here which I thought was kind of cool a little skull mold but I don't know let's see if I can get it to focus I'm holding this one-handed so that's probably my mistake there let's see if I can focus it's got like little bones and stuff uh, that have been etched on the head so I thought we would have a little bit of fun with the chameleon since I have some uh, black resin left over I'm gonna pour that into this and let that set up and then we're gonna dust it with some chameleons afterwards and see if we can really make those details show up all right hang on All right, so this is our creepy little dude, and he does look kind of creepy. But these are the details. And I grabbed him mainly because of the details, and I thought it might be fun to play with mica powders and such to emphasize those details. Now, in within the mold, they're kind of etched in, so it's hard to paint them. So what you do is when you cast something like this, you rub it on the outside because there'll be a lot of details you could pick up from rubbing it here versus doing dry painting within the mold. That would have been a big challenge. So what you would end up doing is painting these uh, recessed areas easier than painting the, the top edges, which I guess could have worked. You just do it in reverse. So let's see what I can do. And I think this will be a fast process. So I got some of my buddy's uh, chameleons. This is uh, Erica at uh, Artist Till Death and her Too Faced collection. This is a uh, Dalmatian and Dalmatian Obsession. And it's got, I believe, some blue tones and some green tones in there. You can kind of see them, but you're about to really see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it so some of these deposits will get on the lid that I can rub my finger across it. Very carefully do a little tap so it doesn't stay all on the lid. And see how it's picking up some of that? All right, I've got this mega zoom. This is really weird. <laughs> so all I'm going to do here is brush my finger across it so it picks up some of this. And let's see if I can tap it on the surface and if they'll leave deposits on the details. So what I'm gonna do when this is done is probably hit it with a shiny gloss um, type of a coating, uh, like a spray varnish kind of thing. That's picking that up really, really well. 
And you can see how difficult this is. <laughs> Not very difficult at all. I could possibly brush it across. Let's see if that looks any better. I got all the little particles off. Now I need to get a little bit more on my lid. Makes it easier. So that way I'm not tipping it, uh, dipping my finger into the powder and getting it all over the place. Because this stuff is so lightweight. And it's also kind of on the pricey side. Most chameleons are. So you don't want to waste it. So we're just going to try and brush it from the beginning and see if that does, uh, yeah, that, that does a lot better. Very sparkly. Scoop up a little bit more. So if you think about using the same technique, so like if you have a mermaid tail and you want to, uh-oh, that would be the dog letting me know that, hey, I'm still out here. I need to come inside. <laughs> that would be my Zoe. Anyway, like if you had a mermaid tail and it had a bunch of scale details on there, uh, this would be one way that you could pick up the details afterwards just by simply rubbing on like a mica powder or something like that. Um, it would look really pretty. All right, one more flip. You know what? Hang on, I'll be right back. I right, let the Zoe, ne Zoe need her in so that she can be all happy. If not, she would be barking a lot more in this video. <laughs> Yeah, but could you imagine like a mermaid tail and playing with the different mica powders in there? That would look really picky. It really, really picky. Really pretty. <laughs> pick it up on the scales and such. And if you want more, just simply pick up more powders and rub it on the area. If you don't like what you see, get some scotch tape and gently bat the area and it'll help pick up the powders to uh, remove them. So it'll go on the high spots, the detail spots. Now if your details are very shallow and they're not very high, then it might end up painting uh, an area. But this will rub off, so you need to do some kind of uh, varnish type spray just to seal it in place. All right. That looks fun. All right, so I picked up some of my gold powder from Just Resin because I'm curious on how the gold powder will do on this just this simple thing. So we're gonna do these little tiny little caps. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, Just Resin powder pigments, and this is the bright gold. But this is the powder one, so keep that in mind. It's not the paste. since I'm so zoomed in. And so you can see I've got some powder here. And just by, cut off my fingers a little bit. Yep, on my shorts. Just by rubbing my finger across. See how I pick up the gold? And I'm gonna just do some areas here. Just kind of random spots. Oh yeah, that gold works really well. 
So probably the, I think it's called aluminum and this gold powder will do really good for this kind of a technique. Give me gold nose. Yeah, I got issues. <laughs> gold around the eyes, make the eyes stand out a little bit more. This is possibly a project that you can do with some little ones, especially uh, uh, ones in the ages where they're starting to pay attention to details. Mold up a bunch of items like fishes or things like that, or like, like I was saying, mermaid tails, uh, that have a bunch of details like this and they could have fun creating these little trinkets. Now, if you wanted to get into the crevices, you could probably use some uh, silicone brushes like you've seen me use in my uh, uh, dry painting videos, and that would work out really well. But for the most part, these are fairly raised up, so I'm not having to use the the brushes at all, just good old fashioned fingers. See like that area right there, because this is up high and that's up high, it's hard for my big finger to get in that small zone. That might be a good zone to, you know, get a little brush in there. Yeah, I can't even touch it. But for the most part, he's done. All right. I've got my triple thick crystal clear glaze to spray this guy with. It's a pretty windy day. I'm hoping I'm not going to regret this. And I've just placed them on a the cardboard and I'm just going to get it lightly on all the sides just for a moment and let that dry. And then I'll probably put another couple more coats on there and eventually get everything covered up. That's how I do this process. Okay. This guy, oh, I didn't need him. <laughs> really pulled over. All right, get back. Stay. <laughs> yeah, I do that around the house too. <laughs> Light coats instead of heavy coats. Whenever you do any kind of spraying. All right. Let that dry for a bit. Hang out with Booch. All right. This creepy looking dude is all done. Looking pretty snazzy. definitely help fix up all the details and such. All right, so add that little technique to your toolbox. Later. Alright, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell. Get notified next time I put a video up. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs>